Um, well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Travel, Pray, Slay. So today I'm super excited because we have a guest on the podcast today, and I am so excited to be joined by Jenny from the Savvy Podcast Agency. And I know Jenny because she is my podcast manager. (laughs) We have to start by thanking you, Jenny, for making all this magic happen. So (laughs) I um, discovered Jenny just through like some podcasting groups when I was doing research, when I was relaunching the podcast in March. And we had a great chat. She's a Texas girl like me. And so here we are. And so I just want to start by welcoming you officially to the podcast. Now you're on the other side, girl. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. This is so fun. I always love, you know, I, I love helping my clients behind the scenes, but it's also fun to be able to share about what I do because, you know, a lot of people aren't familiar with what podcast management is even. They're just like, oh, there's a like a field. That exactly. <laughs> yeah. We'll get into that. I didn't know that. And I, ha- I discovered it by the need of needing help. Right? right. And so today's podcast is, you know, we're gonna talk about business. You know, we always talk about leveling up your life and, you know, just going to that next level. And so for many of you all, you want to go to that next level to start a passion project. Maybe you want to start a podcast Maybe you've been freelancing and you want to go full time into your business, or maybe you just have an idea and you're like, where do I start? So I um, have shared my journey before, um, specifically in my book, Ordinary Women, (laughs) Extraordinary Purpose, um, where I talk about back in 2014, where I quit my corporate marketing and sales job. And um, so this is all about kind of taking those leaps of faith and business and the entrepreneurship journey, the freelance journey, and just kind of like how it can take you down a different road. Like many of you all know, like I'm back in the workforce now. I'm not a 100% entrepreneur. I side hustle now. So obviously I had a journey before a year and a half. I was 100% on my own. And so I think that's important too, because we sometimes think that the end result has to be being a full-time entrepreneur, but I'll never forget when I was working with a business coach, she was like, okay, what was your purpose and your vision? And does this road still get you there? Right. And so at the end of the day, I'm now, even though I'm working full-time, I'm working in the industry and doing the things that I left that kind of dead end job to do. So that's what today is going to be all about. So um, I think you all will enjoy this. You'll enjoy learning more about Jenny's story. And we're just going to have a conversation about entrepreneurship, about podcasting, about business, and just hope this is going to encourage you if you've been on the fist and also give you some tips and wisdom to go with. So just want to start, Jenny, with tell us about who you are and your company. Yeah. So I'm Jenny. Um, As a human and not a business owner, I have a 16 month old son named Everett and a husband and two golden doodles that are just super needy. They're almost like human children. (laughs) Yeah. They're, they're, they're cute, but they're a handful. (laughs) Like I said, they're almost as needy as my actual human child. Sometimes. Are they the same age? Did you get them at the same time? Uh, one is five and one is two. So, you know, (laughs) back and got another one. (laughs) Yeah. And then I found I was pregnant like a month later and I was like, whoops, um, (laughs) but that's okay. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I have, that's me personally. I, you know, I enjoy podcasting, Mm -hmm. listening to podcasts. I enjoy reading, um, dancing, those kinds of things that are like, that's me personally, but my agency, um, wasn't always a podcast management agency. I started in social media marketing, And before that, I had a corporate job as well in social Mm -hmm. media marketing. Um, And with podcasting, I kind of just stumbled upon it. I started my own podcast and then I really loved it. And then I had a client come to me um, and ask, at the time I was like doing social media marketing plus like virtual assistant services. So I had a client come to me and was like, hey, like, I'd love to work with you. I actually have a podcast though. Would you be able to help me manage that? And like, 
Sure. I have my own podcast. I've been managing it since it started a couple months ago. I'd love to kind of see how I can help you with that. Even though I don't have like professional experience with that, I can, I'm sure I can do it. Cause I do it with my own. Um, yeah. and I did everything for her, but the editing, cause at that point I'd never edited a podcast before. And I didn't really want to use someone as my test rat. I'd rather, <laughs> right. I'd rather use my own show as a test rat. So, um, then I just said, okay, yeah, I can do everything, but the editing. Um, so she was mm-hmm. still doing the editing for a while and that was totally fine. But then, you know, eventually she outsourced it, whatever, but that's kind of how I stumbled into the podcast management side of things. And then I realized, wow, I really love this. Like this is way more flexible yeah. than social media. I feel like I can actually take time off because with social media, it's like 24 seven, even if you are like scheduling posts and stuff, you still need to be active and have some kind of like live component, like yeah. be commenting or be responding to messages and stuff. And I just felt like social media, there was just no chance for me to take any time off and it wasn't going to be as flexible. So then mm-hmm. I, you know, in early 2019, I pivoted to podcast management solely. I still kind of kept my clients that were social media based for a little bit, just so I could have some money. Right. Um, I didn't, you know, I had that one client, but I didn't have a ton of other podcast management clients. So I didn't want to like completely just cut them all off um, and not have any money. So from there, I, you know, I didn't take new social clients, but I kept my old ones for a while. And then as we brought on new clients that were podcast focused, I would kind of get rid of one client that was social focused. Um, and then until they were all gone and I had enough podcast clients to be sustainable as just podcasts. Um, we also do like uh, social media marketing for podcasters too now. So that component came in later, but I just didn't want to do social media marketing for just regular people anymore. Cause with podcasting, it's a lot more, it's a lot easier. People aren't DMing you 24 seven. Right. Um, so, and we never, even if they were, that would still be up to the individual podcast hosts to handle. Mm -hmm. We just do the content. So it just made it so much easier. And yeah, so that's kind of where we're at now. And now I have a team of me and seven other amazing contractors helping me with the agency. So I did not anticipate growing that quickly, but yeah, it happened. And I had, I had a baby and I had hired two people and then, um, and then we just started growing after that. I kind of expected it to slow down a little bit because I wasn't super present for a couple months. Obviously I was taking turning leave and stuff, but it ended up being the opposite (laughs) and I'm super grateful, but yeah, I just kind of like did not expect for it to grow that quickly. And I kind of didn't have a choice because I was like, well, I want to take three months of maternity leave, but I don't want to like not have clients for three months because obviously Mm -hmm. that's how I pay the bills. Yeah. So, so yeah. So then I had to really go the agency route and I was, I was already marketing myself as an agency, but I wasn't actually an agency. I had an editor in me and that was it. Yeah. It just kind of expedited my process. Exactly. So a couple of things you said there that stood out to me is that it sounds like one, like you said, it's only been about two years, but you did this during a pandemic. So kudos to you. Like during a pandemic, you had your baby, you grew your business. And, you know, what I heard you say is you went from two to now seven employees. So you are a boss. That's (laughs) That's <laughs> great. And then you talked about kind of doing social media, then podcasting. So like you made a lot of pivots, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's one big thing too. We can all have an idea of how something is going to go kind of like straight lane, but there are all these pivots along the way that you have to make, right? right. And so, yeah. So let's talk about even just when COVID hit, and where you were with your clients and how did you start making those decisions to pivot and say, okay, now it's time for me to be a real agency and get (laughs) help or yeah, Yeah. now it's time for me to let this part of my consulting go and do more of this. How did you make those pivots and adjustments? Yeah. So I found out I was pregnant in October of 20. 19. So, you know, before the pandemic happened, but still very much. So I had my baby 
in the very pretty much almost beginning I had him yeah. in uh, June of 2020 which at that time it was still like whoa what is this we're very. still adjusting right yeah. um so when I found out I was pregnant I literally spent a whole week and I was like oh my god what am I gonna do like I almost burned my business to the ground because I didn't even know what to do with myself uh, <laughs> we weren't not trying, but we weren't like really, really trying. So it was just like, <laughs> right. I mean, I wouldn't you weren't preventing I, anything. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I wasn't, I wasn't like, I didn't think I was going to get pregnant yet. So, yeah. um, so I just kind of freaked out for a week and then I was like, Hey, you need to get yourself together. You have like, you know, at this point, eight and a half months to mm-hmm. make things happen. So what are you going to do? So I started like working on a contingency plan and kind of just getting in stuff. And at that point I was like, okay, I need to make this thing in an agency. Um, and in early 2020, I was already prepared to hire at least one or two support people. Um, and then the pandemic hit and I was like, oh no, like, you mm-hmm. know, are my clients even going to stay with me? This is not a service that is like a hundred percent necessary. I mm-hmm. mean, it's helpful and they know it takes time off their plate, but it doesn't mean that it's, you know, a you know, if they needed to pay their bills or work with me, they were yeah, going to choose to work with one. me. Yeah. Right. And it ended up being the opposite. I actually don't think I was a client during the pandemic, which is super funny. Um, awesome. But people were actually launching podcasts more so because they were like, okay, we have more time. We're at yeah. home. Like, yep. you know, we are working still, but we have more time at our house. We're not going out on, at night or on the weekend, even if they mm-hmm. had kids, you know, they still were, we were all confined in our houses for at least a couple of months in every part of the United States and abroad. Um, (laughs) some people had longer, um, time at home than we did, but, um, Mm -hmm. yeah, so we were all confined at home and then so many podcasts started during that time. So it was just amazing to see. And I was like, okay, this is like reaffirming why I'm doing what I'm doing. Um, you know, and then I felt more comfortable about making those hires. And then I just really like work to prepare my two team members. I did have another person who came in to kind of serve as me during that time is actually my, who is someone who's my biz bestie essentially. And she Mm -hmm. knows my company inside out. We're, we talked every day already. So basically she just stepped in and like managed the projects, made sure my clients were happy, um, all that stuff. And then after I came back from maternity leave after three months, she switched and said, Oh, thank you. Like appreciate it now. And she, nice. went back. Um, yeah. and then from there, it was just me and the two team members plus the editor, but he wasn't like, he was just editing. He wasn't really like super mm-hmm. involved. Um, <clears throat> so then from there we had the two team members and me, and then I want to say it was like October of 2020, maybe November of 2020. I was still at the two team members. That's and then we started January. It had been, you know, people were kind of kind of coming on board slowly. And then I think it was like I want to say it was like March of 2021. It's just like insane. Like that's when like I came four. to you. Yeah, March. I think so. I was like, yeah, I think it was like March or April. Maybe I, yeah. it was April. Okay. So you came in March and then April we mm-hmm. had like four or five clients sign on in like a week. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. okay, hi guys. Like, where where are you where are you coming from? Like, mm-hmm. I was just I was not, I wasn't prepared for that many people. And, you know, I was typically signing like one or two a month, but like five in the same week, I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and then that's when we started hiring on more and more and more team members. So now, like I said, we're at seven, um, plus me and then, yeah, but it was like a season of like, Whoa, I just need to bring on all these people that I wasn't prepared to bring on yet. And it's Um, like that sometimes, right? We aren't always prepared for as much as you go into business, like, yes, I want to be successful and all these things are going to happen. That is often the case. That's part of the journey is that sometimes you'll get going and think, oh, like you said, you had your business bestie, you had your two freelancers, you know, working with you, you kind of were in a groove and then like, bam, and (laughs) it exploded, it exploded. And a lot of people, when they have that explosion, like we've all seen it, whether it's like a restaurant or something, they can't handle it. Right. Like right now I buy like uh, bath and body products from a small business. Um, that's women owned female. I mean, women owned black owned right here in Texas, And they are experiencing that explosion and they are not prepared. They are two months behind on orders. And, you know, it's difficult because you want to give small businesses grace. Um, But, you know, it it becomes like it can definitely 
leave you in a place to where if you're not prepared and you're not able to pivot quickly and yeah. have a team to come on, it can leave you in a place where people are burned from you. Yeah. I mean, because frankly, as much as I love their products, if I ever finally get my order shipped out, <laughs> I like feel like I don't know because they even yeah. had to admit that they grew faster than what they anticipated. Mm-hmm. And they oversold in a sense, because, yeah. you know, you put a product on a website, but then couple that with the supply chain issues that are going on. They had employees out because of COVID. And so I think yeah. especially now during the pandemic too, I think everyone has to continue to be mindful of like what your capacity is. And then when that growth does happen, you have to be able to like shift quickly. And then right. sometimes you may have to admit that we can't do this. So, yeah, I mean, they've actually started offering people like refunds and I was like, I mean, I get it, but it, it is kind of feels like a cop out too. It's like either you're gonna get the product and give us our orders or just say that like, you can't do it and, and give us our money back. Cause I'm like, right. well, I want my soap. Cause I yeah. want <laughs> so I told yeah. them, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm willing to wait, I, you know, I get it. I'm giving you some grace. Um, so, you know, I think that's big is that, you were able to make the shifts um, that you needed. And so I kind of want to like pull back because, you know, you touched on your resignation. I briefly touched on mine. And right now, hashtag the great resignation is a trending topic. Mm -hmm. So as you kind of alluded to during the pandemic, a lot of people made shifts. They started podcasts, they started businesses, they decided they didn't want to go back to that bartender job. They decided they didn't want to go back to that, you know, corporate job. (laughs) <laughs> or they they asked them to come back into the office and they were like, I don't want to uh, work. No thanks, out. not yet. <laughs> yeah, they want to stay working remote. So yeah. a lot mm-hmm. of factors have us in what they are now calling the great resignation, which is people deciding to leave their jobs that they have had. So oh, I want to talk about like my story and then I want to hear more about like your story. And so for those who don't know, um, Right out of college, I started working in corporate America for a transportation company for the railroad, like one of the largest North American railroads. And I was in marketing. And then in 20, oh, I'm aging, 2008. I'm like 24, like, no, girl was longer than that. Like 20 years ago, almost 2008, I moved to Chicago um, with the company and I was in sales. And so during this time, I also started getting into blogging, like back when it was like blogging, like blogger.com, shout out to the yeah. OGs. <laughs> and, I had uh, one of those too. <laughs> yes. I'm like, oh, but before influencer was a word, y'all, there were bloggers and we were those. <laughs> so I started my blog, which some of you all that are listening, I think are kind of OGs, but Miss Travel Chic. And when I started doing that, kind of like you, as I was like blogging and putting myself out there, I started getting friends that were starting up things saying, oh, can you help me with social media, right? I mean, Instagram had just launched in 2012, like Facebook was becoming a thing that people were using to promote their sales. And most people did not, not most, a lot of people did not understand how social media worked. So like my very first like client, if you will, was like, Actually, she was my financial advisor, but she had like wrote this book and she was like, can you help me promote it and stuff online? And I actually was doing like a little bit of like PR, writing press releases. And um, and then I got another client, like this guy I met out at an event was writing a book. So I actually started like my social media marketing services working with authors hmm. and I was writing press releases and all this kind of stuff. And I can remember like the first time somebody was like, well, how much should I pay you? And I'm like, I legit don't. What do you mean? <laughs> I never had a desire to like be right. an entrepreneur or anything like that. I'm like, I've got my corporate job. I went to college. I'm doing the things. I got my master's. I'm going to just rise up in the corporate ladder. Right. And I remember it's like embarrassing to admit like what I charge now. I'm sure like you have that story too. Yeah. Like your first price. I think it was literally like, I think I charged him like, hundred dollars a month and I, <laughs> I I did a fifty dollar project so oh my god oh. you know it's so embarrassing when you look back at it now <laughs> so as the blog and everything started taking off and the social media stuff I was like I love this right I loved what 
I have always felt like was my purpose, which is helping people bring their visions into reality. And so now I was in this place to where I was like, I wasn't totally happy at my job, right? And actually like in that year, the year before I decided to quit, I had actually got put on a performance plan. And I've always been like, top a worker or whatever but and so when I got on that performance plan I kind of thought it was like shady boots for one (laughs) and I was like give me a break right you know but then I kind of took it as a signal to like you know what this is that uncomfortable feeling that we start getting and maybe it's time for me to move on so I did what I needed to do for the next 90 days to make it out of the performance plan and they were like oh you're improving but I in my mind started my master plan right I was like you know what I don't see myself going up further at this organization I remember meeting with the mentor um, and she was like the VP of finance because they would like mentor you with people maybe in different departments and she had me map out like you know where do I want to go and I really like stopped myself at like director and it made yeah. me realize I don't have a desire to be like the VP or the CMO. I don't, I don't want to do this, right? And I, social media was exploding. These opportunities were exploding. Then you started having influencers. And so I got linked up where I was getting like paid to blog, connected to all these conferences. And I'm like, oh, there are people out here doing this and getting paid. I'm just going to do that, yeah. right? And, and that was just really my story. I just took the leap, it, you know, as a single woman, I didn't have any support system. At, by that time, most of y'all know my parents passed away in college, so I didn't have parents to lean on. So I was pretty much going to be funding myself. I did have clients, but it had not replaced my income at all. I was making six figures in a corporate job. So my <laughs> business was not a six figure business at all, right. but I did have savings and I did have one thing that I felt was a financial asset, which was my downtown Chicago condo. And so I talk about in my book and I often tell people I use that as leverage So about a year before I quit, I met with my financial advisor. We talked about kind of all the things that I should be doing. And so that included selling my condo. Um, And I got, you know, some financial gain from that. And then I moved to a different part of town in Chicago where I was paying like 800 bucks less. You know, it was still a nice place. It was just, you know, I went from downtown to the South Side Hyde Park, which still a great neighborhood, but obviously not the same prices. So I saved my money. And then in June of 2014, I quit, you know, and everybody was like, what? And I can remember (laughs) some people telling one of my friends was like, the girl was in the break room last week and I overheard so-and-so saying, Latoya quit to go do something on the internet. (laughs) Everyone was really confused because again, this kind of world of like working in social media and things like it that. It was not the same that it is now. <laughs> it is not the same that it is now. Most companies didn't even have social media managers. Yeah. And so it was like, what are you, what are you doing? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet on myself, but I also did some planning and, you know, I am grateful for that journey. Right. So um, tell us a little bit about like your great resignation story. Yeah. I mean, I don't blame all these first off. I don't blame all these people for Mm -hmm. wanting to quit. I mean, especially as someone who's a mom myself, like seeing the terrible maternity leave that most businesses offer, it's like, geez, like it's awful. And even right now in the government trying to battle about it's it's insane. Um, anyway, but part of the reason why I left is because I wanted to be able to have family. Um, and I didn't see it being easy or what I wanted being still in corporate. Cause it's just, you're away from mm-hmm. not even just eight to five. It's like, you have to leave your house by at least six forty-five to get anywhere. Cause yeah. I always, uh, at the time I lived in San Antonio, so it wasn't a huge city, but it was still pretty trafficy. So, mm-hmm. and then you wouldn't get home until like six or something. And it's just like, cool. My child would be waking up and going to daycare and then going, picking him up and he'd eat and go to bed. Like I wanted to be able to see him more than just two hours a day, except for the weekends. Um, so that was a big thing at the time. I wasn't pregnant. I wasn't even married even, Mm -hmm. (laughs) but I was like, this is what I see for myself in the future. I didn't want to get too far into it. You had a vision. 
Yeah, exactly. I didn't, I didn't want to get too far into it and then quit. And then, you know, I'd rather build my business. And then unlike a lot of people have to build your business while in that newborn phase, because a lot of people I know they're like, I'm not going back to corporate I'm building my business. My child is like three or four months, whatever. Mm It's like, I don't want to do that because it's hard. Like your kid is, yeah, they're sleeping a lot, but it's still, your time is more limited than it would be. So, um, I want to say my last day at my full-time job was December 31st, 2016. My Um, birthday. (laughs) And then I started full-time with my own business on the first. Um, but I did it kind of like, I went from being full-time to part-time to gone because I wanted to leverage that. Um, my boss at the time had quit and her boss had also quit. So I was able to leverage that. I don't know if I would have been able to, if no one, it wasn't like a mass exodus. Cause I mean, we only had like eight employees at the mall yeah. that I worked at, mm-hmm. um, as a social media manager. Um, so yeah, so I kind of leveraged that and said like, look, looks like people are not really happy. I mean, obviously I framed it in a nice, nicer way, but it was like, Hey, like people are leaving. You don't want to have to hire for a third position yet. So let me go part-time for a couple months and then I will, you know, help. And then I'll be able to help train someone during that point while I'm still part-time. If you guys end up hiring someone, they did not, Yeah, Um, but I gave them like three months so I, I went, or two months, two full months. Okay. Um, so I, yeah, and during that part-time. time you set up, you started like getting things yeah, set up. I already had my own business and I started my own business in July of that year. Mm-hmm. Um, so I already had it and I was like <laughs> my first project that I did, like I said earlier, I only charged 50 and then the next one I did 75 and then I did a hundred, yeah. 125. <laughs> so I kind of worked my way up. Um, and it was projects. It was just like a one-time setup for yeah. Pinterest at the time. Um, but now I never charge that little for a full setup of something that's just insane. Um, yeah. but yeah, so that's how I kind of like worked my way up and was able to have the part-time and, you know, with my job and then have my business, yep. um, and I could work on my business. You know, I was in the office Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, I had off and could focus on my business, which was really nice. I liked organizing that way versus going in just the mornings, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or like the whole week. And then having the afternoons, I liked having like a full day dedicated. Um, so that was really nice for a couple months and then I quit and then, yeah. And then it was great. I mean, obviously I wasn't making, you know, I, I didn't, I, so no, 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 unfortunately not. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I, I had gotten married, um, in the middle of that. So I had insurance benefits from my husband. So uh, like, okay, I don't feel so bad. I have insurance. Like if something bad happens, like we're pretty covered. Um, and I was, you know, he, we talked about it. I was like in detail, I was like, Hey, like, is this okay? I asked him like 20 times, like, is this okay? Like, are we going to be okay? Are you going to be okay? Are you going to resent me? If, you know, if I'm not able to help every single month, at least in the beginning, like, obviously I want to get to the point where I can, but like, is this going to cause issues? And he's like, no, 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 no. Like, I want you to pursue your career you seem really happy when you're doing this, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, and that's that conversation is important. <laughs> that yeah. support is so important. And those, those things are scary. Like insurance was something I thought about. So I was able to like, keep my Cobra, which is basically like, keep my same insurance with my company. I quit in the summer. And so I kept it through the end of the year, but it was like, literally you so pay like double right? the cost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I didn't, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> so I was like, Oh, it's ridiculous. I'm getting on but your insurance. <laughs> absolutely. But for, you know, people who like me at the time, I wasn't married. And so, right. Thankfully there was Obamacare. And so that yeah. next year in 2015, I was able to get on Obamacare. And so and it was much, much cheaper. It yeah. was much, much cheaper. It wasn't quite what I was paying when I was employed with the premiums. Yeah. It was only maybe like a hundred dollars more. And it definitely, which is way better than the Cobra. The Cobra is ridiculous. Way <laughs> better. Yeah. I mean, and I'll just be transparent. Like I think maybe I was paying two fifty in Obamacare but when I was on my Cobra, it was like $600 a month. 
Um, and so, like I said, I only did that for like a few months and then You're like, I, I can't anymore. Yeah. I can't. So that's why I tell people, people, when they think of, you know, things like that benefits and stuff, I think sometimes people get a type of person, if you will, in their mind that are, are utilizing those services. And I found myself, you know, needing Obamacare and I had, you know, been, a a middle-class person who just now not fully employed. Right. And I was working for myself. And so that's part of it. Like when you work for yourself, everything, taxes, insurance. You just need to be prepared beforehand because a lot of people don't realize. And I, I I always recommend having like some savings as well, just in case. I mean, I didn't want to, I had savings too. I didn't want to be like completely high and dry if, you know, yeah. anything happened. So I had, you know, a certain amount of money in savings so that I could still pay my bills, even though I wasn't making tons of money, but I knew yeah. that to actually take my business to that next level, I needed to not be working part-time anymore. So, yeah. And I, I love that. Cause I think both of us shared a couple of points. I loved what you said about like, you weren't met, you know, you, you didn't have a kid at the time, but you knew that something you wanted, that was part of your vision. And so I, I, I loved it because like several things that you touched on um, in my book, I talk about this, right? Cause I wrote my book in 2015. So it was, I, I quit. And then, you know, I kept doing my social media client work. I started doing workshops. I started doing speaking engagements and then I started like writing my book. And so mm-hmm. I love what you talked about because it's all about taking the risk, right? And so in um, one of the chapters, I talk about things you need to contemplate, right? And so one of them is you need to remember your vision, right? And so for me, I knew my vision was to help people bring, you know, their visions into reality. And, And I just knew that I didn't see a vision of being at this company and rising up in the ranks, right? You saw a vision that was differently as well too. Freedom, flexibility is what I saw. So you always like when you're going on this journey, um, for those of you all who are thinking about this, remember your vision, you know, recall the vision you created for your life and your career development plan to identify if this thing that you want to do is in alignment, right? So you knew if you wanted to have a family that freedom and flexibility couldn't be gained if you were in a corporate job having to travel a lot. There would be a lot of sacrifices that you would have to make. Um, to evaluate your options. That's what I love so much about the part-time thing, um, that you you know list all the possible risks and options. Be clear about what's the best thing that can happen, as well as take into consideration the worst case scenario and have a game plan laid out. And so I talk about my worst case scenario was I run out of money and I can't pay my rent, right? So I had to play that down to, okay, what does that mean? That means you got to move in with family, right? And then you think about what's the best thing. So like you said, like, that's why you asked your husband 20 times, are you okay with this? Are you okay with this? Because, you know, the worst case scenario would be if you weren't able to contribute every, you know, financially. And I love that you saw an opportunity to stay part-time, use that time to still have some income while you continue to build your business so that it wasn't just like overnight. Um, And then also seek wisdom. So share the opportunity with a colleague, friend, a loved one, or a mentor. You don't always have to take the exact advice, but it just helps to get that perspective, right? And so I know before I quit, I had already hired like a career transformation coach and I had started her program. You know, I counseled with people who had like done this before. And so I'm sure maybe you talked with someone as well too, because having that advice and even now just like things like this, we didn't have podcasts and things like that to Mm -hmm. listen to. There's a lot of this information out there now that I think a lot of people are able to make these decisions a lot easier yeah. that wasn't there. So always seek counsel, seek, listen to a podcast, go to a conference, whatever you yeah. have. To There's do. so many better ways now to do it for free versus, you know, back yeah. then I had hired, I had hired a coach as well, not mm-hmm. specifically for that, but just for helping me grow my business and yeah. confidence and stuff. And now I think we can, we can get that for, you know, cheaper or free because 
there is more of it out there, which yep. is so nice. And, you know, it, but I think it's cool to be on like the beginning parts of like the entrepreneurship journey. I mean, obviously there were entrepreneurs before me and before you, yeah. but like in the online space really is, you know, it's growing every single day and, you know, yeah. back in 2014, when you did it and back in 2016, yeah. when I did it, it's still, we were the pioneers, weird. like none of my <laughs> friends had ever done it actually still most of my all of my friends work in corporate and that's totally fine like my in-person friends yeah. um but it's just it's still something that still people are weirded out about influencers mm-hmm. I mean they know what they do but they're still kind of like how do you make that much money doing that you yeah <laughs> so and and that's a great segue um so those are like a couple points and so like I said our conversation just really aligned with some of those points but you talk about how do you make money and, you know, obviously I've talked about, I'm not a hundred percent, you know, full-time entrepreneur anymore. So obviously something changed. Right. So I want to talk about measuring success. Right. Yeah. Cause I can remember like you, I got a couple like freelance gigs where I was doing like social media marketing, like for a magazine, I took on a couple of clients. I was doing some speaking engagements. I got linked up with the agency and they were sub, I was subcontracting work Mm. through them. And I got to work with some really exciting organizations um, during that time. But I did find myself in this place to where there was more money going out than there was coming Mm. in. Mm -hmm. Right. And actually the way that I landed at the company that I'm in now was through a freelance contract. Mm. And it gave me the opportunity to work on a, 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 a corporate um, global company, fast food chain that we all know that has some arches in it. (laughs) It gave me the opportunity to do social media for that company. And I thought it was great as I'm building my resume. And even as a business owner, like sometimes you take projects because you want to get that experience. But I was there for about, I wasn't even doing that freelance gig for about three months before that agency had an opportunity to join the staff team Mm. and um the assistant vice president at the time who is now my boss and the president of the company I remember when she interviewed me she was like you are super overqualified for this position you wrote a book like what like what is going on and you know so I was very candid I was like hey I, I have to take all the gigs that I can, you know, to keep things afloat and to keep this going. And so she was like, cool. Um, And so then when they wanted to grow um, in the Chicago area and wanted to hire someone to like manage, now manage that team that was at that company and grow, you know, she talked to me about it. And, you know, I really did. I weighed the benefits. I was like, I would have insurance now. I would have a stable income Mm -hmm. and they knew what I was doing. She was like, no, keep promoting your book. Keep doing whatever you do. Um, They were like, you can work remotely. So it was, it was a good way for me to segue. And I remember at the time I I was talking to my therapist about it and a business coach I was working with, I was like, well, does this mean I'm failing? Right. I failed. Like I quit my job and, you know, now I'm back working. And she was like, but aren't you working now in the field that you quit the job for? Cause I was running the social media for the company. I'm managing a team now at this like global, you know, social media. And she was like, you know, the road may look different to get there, but again, if the purpose is still there, um, go yeah. with it. And so, you know, that's really where I am now. Like I enjoy my nine to five, you know, that was six years ago. And like I said, I've grown with the company now. I'm working with other global tech companies that we all know about. I'm running the diversity and inclusion program from there. I got to get some great people leader skills along the way, managing teams of like 30 plus folks. Um, And it's still in the same niche. And I'm still consulting on the side. I'm still podcasting. And so I had to learn to measure success a little bit of a different way. So- Mm -hmm. As we wrap up, um, how do you kind of measure success? And as you went along that journey, how did like your view of success start to change as a business owner? Yeah, obviously when you're first starting, it's typically about the money just because yeah. like, I need to pay my bills. It's like, exactly. you're paying I mean, like if I don't make money, I'm not going to be able to pay my rent kind of situation. Um, mm-hmm. But as you grow and as you continue to develop as a person, and as a business owner, it becomes more about impact, at least for me. And for me, as long as I'm able to help women 
launch and grow their podcast and like their message out into the world, I feel super fulfilled. Um, Obviously money is important too, because I need it to live. But Mm -hmm. to me, obviously now that I have an agency, a lot of the money is not going directly into my pocket. I have way more expenses than I did before, but okay with that because our clients are being supported. We can help more people that way. I'm still getting enough money to pay my bills and more um, and have, you know, tons to spare. So Mm -hmm. I'm super, I feel super fulfilled. I love supporting our clients. And obviously that will, you know, that will evolve as the agency grows because I am not going to be able to speak one-on-one once we're 30 plus clients um, deep because then I'd be having a conversation with someone every day or multiple conversations mm-hmm. a day. And that's just overwhelming. But as of right now, I can, I help every single client that we have one-on-one once a month in a, you know, kind of a consulting call kind of framework. Yeah. And yeah. So I love doing that and I don't ever want to stop that, but I know that as my business continues to grow, we're going to have to bring on, you know, new account managers and things like that and people to support me to support our clients. So I'm just kind of loving the point that I'm in the journey right now. And yeah, for me, success is all about the impact. Yeah, I love that. And you make a great impact. So as we wrap up, I want you to share about that because you don't just manage podcasts and help people like me. For me, when I went back into podcasting, I didn't want to be overwhelmed, right? I work I do the podcast. I have a personal life. And my coach at the time was like, you need to outsource, right? So we talked before about outsourcing a lot of things in your life, getting a nanny, getting somebody to help clean Mm -hmm. your house, getting somebody to help with things. So I knew I needed to outsource. So you help people like me, but then you also host conferences because what Mm -hmm. I heard you say is your mission is to not only help people launch their podcast, but to get their message out into the world. And so there are so many different platforms and ways people can do that. So tell us about like your profitable podcast summits and some of the other things that you're doing, and then tell people how they can find you online and how you can support them. Yeah. So I have two summits that I run. I have the profitable podcast summit, which is for podcasters, um, primarily that are using their podcast as a way to generate income. So like support their business, not like a hobby podcaster. That's just doing it for fun. I mean, just that you can learn some good nuggets, but that's kind of the target audience. And then I also host another summit called the profitable podcast manager summit, which Mm -hmm. is for podcast managers or people looking to become podcast managers. So like kind of do what I'm doing essentially. So those are the two summits we have. We have both ones happen annually. Um, mm-hmm. I'm planning my podcast, profitable podcast on it for February. So I'm really excited about that, but I love hosting those. They're so fun. Like it's a great way for me to meet others in the space and also make an even bigger impact. Cause obviously not all these people are going to be clients of mine, but they've been able to learn from the speakers that I've curated to help, um, teach, you know, about podcasting and podcast management and business and all kinds of things. So, um, that's been a really fun way to make more impact without having to bring on like a hundred clients. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, so that's a little bit about that, but you can find me. I am my agency website is savvy podcastagency.com, but I hang out the most on Instagram mm-hmm. and that is at Jenny dot Sunnison. So S U N E S O N. Um, I'm rebuilding my Instagram because Instagram, my Instagram got hacked and disabled, which is uh, really lovely. Um, <laughs> I know. So yeah. So if you go to my Instagram and see, I don't have that many followers and I have like maybe one or two pictures. That's why. Um, but yeah, so we're rebuilding over there, but yeah, that's where I try to hang out the most just because I like being able to do stories and feed kind of post and have that variety there. So yeah. Awesome. Well, you can't get out of a travel pray slay podcast without my two favorite questions. <laughs> so what was your favorite trip and why? And then what's your favorite Beyonce song? Okay. My favorite trip, <laughs> um, I have a tie really. So we, I, I went to Hawaii with my parents and my now husband at the time he was just my boyfriend mm-hmm. for my graduation. And that was really, really fun nice. and beautiful. Um, and it was like kind of my first first trip 
like, I mean, I was still in the U S but no. you know, it was like, it kind of didn't feel like outside of the continental. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So we had a really good time. And then my second one is my husband. And I went to Jamaica on our honeymoon. Uh Oh, no, you're cutting out. Mm -mm. Tide favorites. Okay, you cut out Jenny. Okay, do you remember where? It's, yeah. Um, So we start at, um, my husband and I were going to Jamaica. Oh, okay. Yeah, so my second favorite trip is my husband and I went to Jamaica for our honeymoon and we stayed at Sandals, which is an all-inclusive resort. And it was really, really fun. It was really relaxing. It was, I feel like it was the first vacation that I actually relaxed on. Because like yeah. most vacations, you have like planned activities and that, you know, not itineraries. Because that's a little like, I mean, some people do, but that's not ever been how. I- yeah. Um, but it was just like the first trip where we would just like chilled and relaxed. And I think we did like one excursion and that was it. And it just mm-hmm. felt so nice and relaxing. And I was just my first trip in business that I also took off completely um and was able to just not do anything so it was Mm -hmm. really 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 nice what part Um, of jamaica uh we went to um the the right no it was a royal caribbean resort so oh montego bay yeah that's where it is yep i couldn't Mm -hmm. think of it yeah (laughs) it's like i remember the resort name but i can't remember yeah but it was beautiful we went zip lining uh, that was our only Yay. excursion. We went to planning and it was so pretty and just mind blowing. So I love both of those. I've been <clears throat> to Hawaii, Waikiki Beach, and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like you, yeah, I felt like, oh, this is America, but like, yeah, not really. <laughs> it didn't feel like it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we went to Maui and Maui, we also went to no. Waikiki as well, but Maui was like, oh, um, Waikiki is what you kind of not what you expect, but it's a little more commercial, you know? Yeah. And then Maui is just kind of like, whoa, this was like Maui made me feel like I was, um, yeah, Maui made me feel like I was in a different country because Mm -hmm. it was just what I heard. It wasn't like as commercial. There wasn't like, you know, restaurants that you would see Mm -hmm. every day. It was like more small businesses and small restaurants that were only in Maui or, you know, one of the other smaller islands. So, yeah. And, and then my, it's beautiful so yeah <laughs> it is and then my favorite Beyonce song I would say I really like crazy in love that's just a classic yes. I actually had that it was our like our um bridesmaids and groomsmen came out to that <laughs> song like I like, like that. when they were entering the dance floor or whatever from from like the ceremony to the wedding kind of switch mm-hmm. um so yeah I, it's just a fun song it's you know makes me want to get up and dance and yep, yep that's why my favorite so see i knew you had the beyonce vibe going <laughs> that is a perfect uh wedding party yeah <laughs> yeah um, yeah right. i thought it was fun it's like fun to dance too so mm-hmm. well thank you so much jenny for joining me yeah, i so enjoy got, getting to have this conversation with you because we are mainly always talking business particularly <laughs> my business and yeah. my podcast And so I love being able to learn a little bit more about you and thank you for sharing your journey. You know, I know it's going to be helpful to so many. Um, And again, you know how to get in touch with Jenny. Um, She gave you all her information. You can also check the show notes. You all know how to get in touch with me. If you haven't already got the book, you can still get the book on my website, travelpraceslay.com slash shop where if you want to learn more about like my journey and just steps you can take. So thank you again for joining us, Jenny. And thank you all for listening until next time. Bye.